On this episode of Metters Motors, we restore the wood wheels on the Durant. Now this is one of the wheels off of the 30 Durant. Sadly, I committed a sin and I did not film the process of stripping and varnishing these spokes, but I will roll a couple of pictures across of the process just to give you an idea. All right, well, it seems I may have told a fib. My lovely wife, Cameron, got on her phone and found this video she recorded of me stripping the black paint off of the spokes. As you can see, I'm just heating it up, rubbing it with a scraper, and it's falling off like butter. Now the materials I used was this cheap heat gun I got from Home Depot, I believe it was. I uh, paid 19 bucks in the clearance aisle and this uh, metal scraper here. Pretty much what I did was I put it on high and I cooked the paint. I just sat there and gave it all the heat. Just get, gave it all the heat. You know, just started rubbing it with the scraper and it literally fell right off. I'm sure I got lead poisoning from it, but I've lost so many brain cells over the years, I'm not really counting anymore. But, you know, this being a hundred year old hickory, it was in surprisingly good shape. It's still solid. It's not loose where the dowels go into the rim here. It does have some water damage from over the years. It's got some, you know, very light cracking. Some of the spokes on some of the rear wheels are a little questionable. But you know, it's a tin can going 60 miles an hour, so we'll see what happens. But the varnish I used, my neighbor Russ recommended this stuff. Now he's he's been, you know, in the business for, oh, 30, 40, 50 years or so. Um, he really knows what he's talking about. He recommended this Minwax Hellsman Marine Spar. Man, it turned out really good. What I did was I scuffed it down with like a 320, 200 grit, um, whatever I had in my hand at the moment, and got it nice and smooth. Took a cheap, you know, 79 cent brush and brushed it on there. Waited about six hours and then came back, scuffed it up again, knocked the hairs off, applied another coat and repeated the process until I had three coats on there. And uh, man, it's so smooth and shiny. It, I mean, you can still see the water damage on them, but I think it gives it character. Now here's some of the tools I'm gonna to be using to strip the wheels. First up, we've got the 110 pound pop blaster from Harbor Freight. There are certain things you don't buy from Harbor Freight, like jack stands, for instance. But this thing right here I looked out on, I think it was like 140 bucks with the coupon, and dude, this thing was a lifesaver. I sandblasted the entire frame of the Durant. Uh, make sure if you are going to get this pop blaster to go ahead and buy the dead man valve. It comes with some, some more tips on it. I think it comes with three extra tips. It's like 15 bucks. Highly recommend it. This saves a ton of media. But the media I'm, I'm using is black diamond you get it from the local tractor supply it's a coal slag it's ten dollars per 50 pound bag give you a shot of it there if i can get the camera in focus but this is the fine and keep in mind i've recycled this this bag right here has been recycled at least seven times and i've still got a couple more jobs i could probably get out of it but I bought three bags. They were ten dollars per fifty-pound bag, and I've I've used them over and over and over and over, and I'm going to use them again on these wheels. Um, so let's see if we can strip them. I probably did this backwards. You're probably supposed to do the middle part first and then the wood, but I got in a hurry and did the wood. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use like a regular masking tape and go ahead and tape the wood spokes up, and then. 
this is like our off-brand Gorilla Tape almost, uh, some Venture Tape. It rolled off somebody's contractor truck in front of the house. So I just went out there and picked it up. But it looks pretty high quality. But I'm gonna put this over the masking tape as extra barrier when I'm sandblasting and uh, hopefully it won't damage the wood. All right, we've got the wheel here, getting ready to get it masked off. Uh, first, I'm gonna take the rim off of it. And the crazy thing about this design is it's not like modern cars where it's got lug nuts around the hub. This actually has four bolts that clasp it to the, the wood spoke rim. So it's got an outer rim that holds the tire and then it's got an inner rim that holds the spokes. And that outer rim just pulls off and a little bit of what I'm talking about here is you've got this clasp and as you're tightening this you got one end holding the inside of the rim and one end on the outside and it's pinching it together and it and it holds it in place Now the hard part is getting this out with the valve stem. You gotta kinda, you gotta let all the air out and push the valve stem in and get it out. All right, I got it flipped over. I got the air let out and I pushed the valve stem in. Uh, so it should just lift on out. All right, now that we've got the inner rim off, I was gonna show you this really cool part about these is they got this seam here. It's a clincher style rim. So it's got this lock that locks it together. Once you pop that lock open, you can pull this rim out and it just kind of spirals on out. It's like a bicycle tire. It's got a tube inside of it. A lot of the time, just like today's spare tires, you had one of these bolted to the back of the car all ready to go so you just pop those four bolt style clasp off of there and then pop the new one on all right we're going to finish getting her all taped up and we'll be back in a second now i'm going to go ahead and leave the grease cap on here since i'm going to be sandblasting i don't want any dirt or grime inside the hub where the bearing races are. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and protect it, go ahead and mask it off, and I'm gonna do the same back here and uh, keep it all clean in there. Lord of mercy, that took forever. Gonna get the grease cap and uh, hopefully that'll be it. Now I didn't film the process of setting the driveway up because there is a thunderstorm fast approaching and I'm gonna try to get at least one sand blasted and maybe painted, but it's not looking too good. But you wanna make sure that you have a respirator with filters that probably aren't even any good anymore. Some gloves and a good hood. All right, well that worked out really good. That uh, came pretty clean. The tape stayed where it was supposed to stay. I'm happy with that. Uh, so let's get some primer on it.
You know, I should probably sandblast the hub too. All right, round two. I think we got her that time. Now for the primer, I'm just gonna use some primer in a can. It's just some uh, Rust-Oleum self-etch primer. It's good for bare metal and it primes at the same time. It's also sandable. All right, guys, well, it's getting uh, pretty humid outside. Looks like it's gonna start thunderstorming in about 15 to 20 minutes. So it's not looking like I'm gonna get a coat of paint on here in this episode. Plus, when I went to the local O'Reilly's to get my paint mixed, I purchased clear coat and asked for a base coat in jet black. I got home and got a single stage in jet black. So if I could get them to mix me up the correct paint for one out of four tries, that would be good. <coughs> Anyways, we'll try again next time. Have a good one. Nothing, you can't have nothing, baby. Nothing in food.